today I'm here to bring you the second part of my February wrap up. I will link that first part down below. I'm not going to beat around the bush, this is probably the worst wrap up I've ever done. I only read two books in the second part of February. But I'm okay with that. I read quite a few in the first part and I listened to quite a few audiobooks at the beginning of the month as well. So I'm not going to beat myself up too badly but I'm still quite annoyed. Now I'll say from the off that I didn't get to two of my challenges this month. I didn't get to my library book and I didn't get to my reread. But I think those two were challenges that I'm kind of going to loosen up on because I'm quite enjoying reading new books and books off my shelf at the moment. And obviously my library reads, as much as I love using the library, they do take me away from the books that I already have and as do the rereads I've sort of got to the point where I don't have that many books that I'm desperate to reread at the moment so I'm going to sort of loosen up on those I mean I've got a library book out for March so I'll still be doing them occasionally but I'm not as I say beating myself up too badly about the fact that I didn't do them this month so I will get straight into the books this is going to be a quick one I read The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Murakami this is probably why I didn't get many books read it's very it doesn't look as thick as it is but it's very the pages are very thin the writing is tiny and it's 600 pages as it is I think it probably would have been more if the pages weren't so thin as well um, so it's a hell of a long book it's also a very slow and gentle book and for the first sort of half of it or at least the, th the first three quarters I was really enjoying it um, and I was enjoying luxuriating in the experience of reading it anyway I'll let you know what it's about first this is about a man in Japan called Toru Okada I think yep and it's going to be very difficult for me to tell you what this is about, but basically he has given up work. So we know that he's given up his job in a lawyer's office um, and he's not really sure what he wants to do now. He's got a bit of money behind him, so he's not in any rush to get a new job. And he's sort of just, we follow him around and watch him through his day and strange things start happening. He starts receiving bizarre phone calls from people he doesn't know and he starts bumping into these strange characters. He becomes friendly with a girl down the street, um, a 16 year old called May, who kind of becomes this strange companion for him. And things between his wife and him aren't quite right. And we also know that he has a cat that has gone missing. I think that's about as much as I'm gonna say about this. And we learn all of that very early on. So there's a lot of stuff that happens in here. As I say, the first three quarters I was loving. I don't know whether my reading of this hindered my enjoyment of it because it did take me a long time to get through and as I have said before I really struggle if I take too long on a book I kind of lose the interest in it um this took me two weeks which is the longest a book has taken me in years and I don't know whether that affected how much I enjoyed it or not but I definitely felt towards the last 200 pages it just kind of went in a direction that I couldn't go it kind of as I say it's very difficult to say without ruining things but throughout it's almost like we're leading up to this big revelation and we're going to find out what is going on and why these things are happening and we do to a certain extent but at the same time it's all kind of left quite open and basically when I finished this book I sort of shut it and thought about it and the only way I could describe it is to say that weird shit happened and that's literally like that's it like, really bizarre things happen to this man we don't follow him to get a job or anything like that we literally just follow him on these weird little adventures and these weird people that he meets and it all gets a bit sort of surreal a lot of people say this is magical realism and I suppose to a certain extent it is but I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as magical realism it, it's kind of just surrealism it's it's strange bizarre things that happen but for me, I think magical realism I like to think of as quite subtle and metaphorical. This, I think, was a bit too literal to be magical realism for me, but then that's probably just my definition of the term. Um, it, it's one of those books, I just, I don't know. I, I was loving it. I was absolutely loving it, thinking it was going to be a five star on my top list. And then it just completely lost me. But as I say, it may well have been the way I read it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It was good but it could have been better. I felt like it just needed to have more of a stable conclusion to be a five star for me, but I gave it a four and it's definitely made me want to revisit Murakami. Up until this point, I have only read Norwegian Wood by him. So it's definitely made me want to go further into his work. So I'll see what I think of the next Murakami I pick up. And then the other book I read this half of the month was Laurie Moore's Bark. This was the short story collection that I picked from my short story tag, which I will link down below. Excuse me if it keeps going dark, clouds and whatnot. Um, and yes, I loved the first short story in this when I read it for the tag, so I picked this one straight up. I have to say that I I was a bit disappointed in the second half of this again. What's going on with second halves of books at the moment? I really loved the first half and there were some stories in there that really stood out for me. 
but the second half the stories just kind of seemed to lose their purpose a lot and kind of were just meandering and pointless at certain points so I yeah I lost my love for this it's not my favorite Laurie Moore in fact it's probably the least sort of together collection of hers that I have read I would say that Laurie Moore is definitely not for everyone stories are from quite a narrow perspective so apart from a few stories in here that are from the perspective of men most of them are from white middle class women who are kind of having breakdowns or having issues with self-esteem or self-image or something like that um and for me, I, I like a bit of whininess every now and again, so it kind of satisfies my depressive needs. But I think a lot of people would probably find it quite repetitive and also kind of say that it's quite a privileged standpoint, um, which I would agree with. And I think her other stories are the same. They're always from the perspective of white middle class women. But then I also think people are a bit harsh on authors sometimes, like for a set to a certain extent, you write from your own experience. I still like Laurie Moore. Um, if you want to pick her up and you haven't started with her, I wouldn't say start here. I would say start with something like Self Help, which is her first collection, and which had much stronger stories in it for me. As I say, this just lost me towards the second half, sadly. So that is everything I read in the second half of February. Never mind, on to March, and I plan to read more then. I've got quite a big pile of books that I plan to get through, so hopefully I will have more of a wrap-up next month. And I hope you had a good reading month, and I will see you next time. Bye!